Orbital cellulitis is the topic, also known as postseptal cellulitis. And um, what does that mean, postseptal, preseptal, or postseptal? So I, I drew a quick diagram here. If this is the eye, this is the septum right here, right there. So postseptum just means everything after that. And preseptum would be anything before that. So let's color. Let's use green. Actually, let's use red. Uh, pre-septum would involve anything that's before. So, for example, a um, swollen eyelid would be pre-septal. So, if the eyelid was swollen just by itself, that you would characterize that as pre-septal. Now, if anything comes after, uh, well, you get the idea. Everything afterwards, that's postseptal. And um, that septum is really the, the key here because if it's afterwards, it's very serious. And that's why it's called orbital cellulitis. So, what what is the reason that this happens? What is the cause, the etiology? Well, for uh, orbital cellulitis, in close proximity uh, to the um, eye are the sinuses. And these sinuses in particular, one that's called the ethmoid sinus, is um, heavily involved in the etiology of orbital cellulitis. And what happens is, basically, a pathogen will travel from this ethmoid sinus to the orbital area. And the most common pathogen is strep pneumo, um, streptococcus pneumoniae. Now, there's another reason you can get orbital cellulitis, and that is trauma. And if there's any trauma, and an infection arises from the trauma, the bugs are different. The bugs are either staph aureus, or strep pyogenes. Pyogenes. So those are the two big reasons. You can either have a local trauma that causes an infection, or you can have a sinus infection um, that leads to uh, orbital cellulitis. So an orbital infection is just to um, kind of illustrate how severe it is, it's extensive and very severe. It can, um, about 10% of the time, lead to vision loss. So if this is uh, the case, um, it's obviously a pretty dramatic uh, consequence of orbital cellulitis. So what are some of the signs and symptoms? Well, a lot of this you can probably deduce there's going to be redness of the eyelid, uh, but there's going to be a lot, lots of other severe. Uh, the surrounding tissues will also be swollen and red. And in, in addition, you're going to have uh, decreased ocular motility. So the eye, move, eye movements will be compromised. So as you can see, as you go down this list, things get more and more severe. Another thing that you'll have is eye pain, uh, pain with eye movements. Anytime you have a clinical vignette that talks about pain with eye movements, that's pretty severe. And you can also have something called proptosis, which also is known as exophthalmus, which basically means that the eye can protrude outward. And yet another thing that's also very severe is fever. If you have some patient uh, on a licensing exam that has pain with eye movements and fever, that's pretty severe and make, should make you think of orbital cellulitis. So how do you diagnose it? Well, most of the time it's just a clinical evaluation. We're looking at the eye and talking to the patient in terms of symptoms. But on licensing exams, they do definitely mention doing a CT or MRI. And that is because 
of the uh, extensive involvement uh, that can occur uh, with this type of an infection. Treatment. Well, remember, if you remember back just a couple minutes ago, I talked about um, some of the causes. If the patient has um, orbital cellulitis because of a sinus infection, then the treatment is a little different than if there was a local trauma. So if this was the case, you treat the patient with um, antibiotics that also cover meningitis because you are afraid that it might spread to that. So most commonly cefotaxime. And these, IV, these antibiotics are given IV. And you can't treat it with oral antibiotics. It's too severe. So very serious. If the uh, orbital cellulitis was acquired because of trauma, then the uh, antibiotic choices are a little different. They include vancomycin. Um, most commonly, they include vancomycin um, in uh, clinical vignettes, also given IV, of course. So let's take a look at some vignettes and see what this looks like. A patient with a long history of sinus infections consults a physician because one eye is extremely sore. Physical exam demonstrates erythema and edema of the eyelids and conjunctiva. The eyeball is protruding and the patient is unable to move his eye in some directions. Additionally, the patient is running a high fever. Which of the following is most likely? Well, the key things in this, the eyeball is protruding, so that's the proptosis. Unable to move his eye, that's the uh, ocular motility um, being decreased. And uh, you've got the fever. So all this points to orbital cellulitis. So just in case you're wondering why the other answer choices, because sometimes the other answer choices look very similar, bacterial conjunctivitis will not produce proptosis. This one, blepharitis, is basically uh, inflammation of the lid, the eyelid, and uh, you would not get these other types of symptoms. Dacrocystitis is the inflammation of the tear duct, and a hordeolum is basically involves the eyelash follicle. So none of these would present with such severe uh, physical exam findings. And lastly, big long one, a nine-year-old girl is brought to the clinic because she has felt sick and has been unable to go to school for past two days. She has headache, congestion, rhinorrhea, and double vision. Past medical history is remarkable for recurrent otitis media. Um, she lives at home with her mother uh, and grandmother who are both cigarette smokers. Temperature is 101, pulse is 120. Uh, physical exam shows tympanic membranes with evidence of previous surgery, but otherwise normal. Erythematous oropharynx with exudation, slight exophthalmus of the left eye. On the left, the ocular exam also demonstrates periobital edema, injection of the conjunctiva, and trace restriction of extraocular movements and an afferent pupillary de defect. The right eye is normal. The rest of her physical exam is unremarkable. At this time, the most correct statement about the condition is... All right, well, let's go through this. Um, a CT of the head is not really appropriate uh, for orbital cellulitis. You have to do a CT of the orbits. So that's a little bit of a trick there. Gentamicin eye drops. Orbital cellulitis is not treated with eye drops. There's no value in that whatsoever, so that's gone. Hospitalization and IV antibiotics. Absolutely. That is the correct answer, but let's just keep going. Oral antibiotics. Nope. Can't do oral. Can't do oral antibiotics. Too severe. And otitis media is a common cause of this condition. Uh, that is not true either. So this is definitely orbital cellulitis. She's got um, this sinus type uh, infection and most likely that's what caused the uh, orbital cellulitis. She's got a fever and there's several other clues in here that 
the slight exophthalmus and also the fact that she's got some restriction of her eye movements. So all that point to orbital cellulitis.